what's up, Ithaca High School? Welcome to Lake Street News. I'm Cora Easton. And I'm Hannah Barden. You going to Winter Formal? Um, yeah, how about you? I am. I actually am going to buy tickets for my friends because they don't have a lunch period. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Due to complaints regarding the casting choices of the directors and grievances brought up to the school board meeting earlier this month, the annual spring musical, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, has been canceled. A group of students took notice that the role of the character Esmeralda had been given to a white actor when an actor of color was also up for the part. Some students felt the role called for an actor of color and then wrote a letter to a local newspaper detailing what they believed to be racism in the IHS drama department. The group then went to the ICSD Board of Education to voice their concerns, resulting in the cancellation of the musical. The arts program, along with the athletics director, are in the process of planning a new course of action for the school to take. Details of this plan have not been disclosed, but we'll be sure to fill you in when more information is released. Now to Mike and Zuki with a special MN Sports. Hi, Chess. I'm Zuki Wagner. And I'm Mario Gualtieri. We have a special senior night week on MN Sports. So let's get right into this week's highlights. To start off this episode, we have the senior night for the boys' varsity hockey game against CBA. We start off the night with a celebration of five seniors on the hockey team, these being Sam Roach, Brian Conuel, Jamie Weatherby, Grady Simpkins Marston, and Captain Xander DiNapoli. Xander DiNapoli had a hat trick on the night, being the impact player of the game, and here's two of those three goals. I was lucky to get a post-game interview with DiNapoli, and this is what he had to say. Alrighty, Xander DiNapoli, thank you for coming on to uh, MN Sports. I really appreciate it. No problem. Um, first off, I want to say to you, you know, congratulations on your senior night. That's a big night for you. Obviously, you know, you guys, it's your last home game, and I know you want to put it all out there, all on the line. So my real question for you is, what was your mindset going into this game? Well, I mean, going into this game, all the kids want to do it for the seniors because it's our night. And they just want to get the W because it's a big deal. You know, we went out there, we played hard, and ultimately we did get the W. You guys beat them six to one. They, you know, they beat CBA six to one, and that's absolutely crazy. You guys blew them out. You know, you guys have kind of a shaky season. You've had some losses in there, but how does this six to one win help you guys progress and get some momentum to further on your season and go deep in your season? Well, you know, any win is a big win, but when you're getting those bigger deficits, you know, it really helps us build the momentum. And we just got to ride that from game to game and make sure that if we just keep building off that, we're just going to keep doing great things. Sounds great. Congratulations on being this uh, week player of the week. And I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your season. Thank you. So what did you uh, think of the game as a whole, Zuki? Well, Mike, when I looked at this game, it was something that Little Red doesn't do often. Rack up a lot of points and do it while they're having fun. Mm -hmm. Although there were two injuries, I hope all the players get well soon who got injured. They still did it and impressed their team, and they brought their seniors up that night, which is the purpose of senior night, and you know, kind of glorified them mm -hmm. because they're leaving next year. Absolutely. The game ended in a victory for the Little Red with them destroying CBA 6-1. to one. All right, Congratulations to the boys, and I wish you guys all the best of luck throughout the rest of your season. Now we're going to move on to Zuki with the girls' varsity basketball game. Well, thank you, Michael. We had a great game. The first girls' sport first to be held on MN Sports. And not only it was the senior night for Ashley Charles and Shantice Bryant. They celebrated with family and fans. And the score for the whole game was really tight. They were playing the Corning Hawks. So Little Red put up many points and maintained a strong defense throughout the game. Although a good game, it was a little sloppy on the side of the Corning Hawks. A lot of fouls were called on them. Um, we did see great plays such as this to get points racked up, and we also saw amazing play from Grace Angorski as she maneuvers past the defender. We slowed it down just so that all our viewers could see the astonishing expertise. What do you think about that, Mike? Well, I think the way that she uh, maneuvered past the defender, she made it look like it was absolutely easy. There was yeah. like, no problem there, and she just got right by her, no problem, put it in. I thought that was a great, you know, basket for her, and... I mean, it looks like it must have showed how the game went because clearly they uh, had a great win.
That is exactly true, Michael. We did get an interview with Gorski. Let's take a look at what she had to say. Um, we did really well against Corning. That was like a need win, and I'm proud. It was like a perfect effort, not necessarily a perfect game, but uh, definitely a perfect effort. How do you feel personally about your own performance? I mean, I always want to improve, um, definitely with my shooting, but I, I, I'm happy we won, so I think we're good. I think we're good. The girls did win 50-34 to against the Corning Hawks and had a great game overall. Well, I just, that's all for this week. See you next time on MN Sports. Earlier this month, I interviewed students in our new segment, Lake Street Poll. Let's take a look. What's up, Ithaca High School? I'm your host, Corey Eason, and welcome to Lake Street Poll, where we ask you the pressing questions. Our first question, toilet paper. Should it be crumpled or should it be folded? Well, I would say to each of their own, but personally, I do the fold. <laughs> Obviously, it should be folded. Who crumples their toilet paper? Like, you nasty? Like, what's wrong with you? Folded. Um, I mean, like, what, who crumples toilet paper? I think either one is good. You know, whatever floats your boat. Second question. Is it pronounced GIF or JIF? Definitely JIF. I'd have to say. I don't, I've never heard GIF. GIF is a peanut butter brand. GIF is a moving picture thingy, whatever. GIF. G-I-F. GIF. You know, because like, GIF would be G-I-F, like J-I-F, like, you know, like the peanut butter. But G-I-F is GIF. Generally, I try and get some medium where I just go GIF and hope that both sides. <laughs> you hope no one notices? Yeah. <laughs> and then our final question, the universal question that faces all, all of mankind, which is better, cats or dogs? <laughs> Duh, obviously dogs. Cats are stupid and they hate everybody. Dogs. Cats are evil. Dogs all the way. Um, cause, like, dogs are better. I go with dogs or cats that act like dogs. You heard it here, folks. Dogs or cats that act like dogs are the best. That's all for this episode. See you next time, IHS. You no, know, today, I just woke up. Is that sweet to me? Yeah, I was about to say. Jimmy, Jimmy sweet materials. No, instead of waiting on a good day. Jim, Jim, Jim. <laughs> waiting around, through ups and downs, waiting on something to happen. I just said.